Tonight on CTV, a third bank has been robbed in Fort Collins this past month, and an update on the results of the ASCSU election. Then a rundown of the Doug Max Invitational and how pigeons are being used as a form of communication. All that and more on CTV, starting now. Good evening, Rams. I'm Ren Wandsworth. And I'm Robbie Patla. Our top story tonight, First Bank on College Avenue adds to the list of banks that have experienced attempted robberies in the last month. First Bank was robbed around 3 in the afternoon on the 21st of March, and according to police, a man entered the bank, indicated he had a gun, and demanded cash from the tellers. The man then fled the location with an undisclosed amount of money. Police say the suspect is around 5'2", with tattoos on his wrists and hands, and no employees or customers were injured during the incident. This is the third bank robbery reported in Fort Collins in a month, and CTV will continue to update you on this issue as the investigation progresses. A former Colorado youth basketball coach has been charged with sexual assault of a minor. Torrell Hughes, former coach at Integrity Sports Arena in Windsor, was charged with sexual assault on a child in possession of trust. Position of trust, excuse me. Possession of a sexually exploitative material of a child and sexual contact without consent. Following these allegations, which began in January, Hughes was arrested and fired from his position on March 13th. Hughes was, arrest, was released from Larimer County Jail on a $50,000 bond on April 1st and is scheduled to appear in court today on April 6th. Three employees at two long-term elderly care facilities in Fort Collins have tested positive for coronavirus. This comes weeks after the workers had been fully vaccinated against the virus. Two others of their co-workers tested positive in between their first and second doses and were all asymptomatic and identified through weekly testing. However, Larimer County health officials say that the newly identified cases should be considered breakout cases and are not a cause for concern about the efficiency of the vaccine. In total, two employees from Brookdale Fort Collins Memory Care and four at LeMay Avenue Health and Rehabilitation have tested positive this week. Additionally, 12 other outbreaks have occurred within the week. Samples from five of the cases have been sent to the state for further testing in the hopes to identify if their workers were infected with a variant of coronavirus. You know, I actually haven't gotten a chance to get the new virus, even though it is available to the public now. How about you, Robbie? Yeah, I haven't gotten the vaccine myself. However, it is on my agenda. And speaking of this, we will now head over to Sarah Fowler, live in the studio, who will give us a rundown on the new phase of coronavirus vaccinations. Sarah? Thanks, Robbie. On April 2nd, COVID-19 vaccines entered into a new phase. It allows everyone in the general public to get their COVID-19 vaccine through appointment only. Many COVID-19 vaccine locations are allowing people who volunteer for two shifts to get their vaccine right away, including the ranch located in Loveland. Larimer County has many vaccine sites available, including King Supers and Walmarts in the, in the area. Moby Arena, located on Colorado State's campus, also began giving out vaccines through appointments on April 5th. All three vaccines, Pfizer, Moderna, and Johnson & Johnson, are available at most vaccine sites. Hopefully, with this phase being put into place, Colorado will soon find a new normal again. Back on CSU's campus, two organizations are partnering up to help students save money. Rams Against Hunger is a Colorado State University organized group that helps with students, faculty, and staff around campus that are dealing with food insecurity. They have different programs for everyone, including a food pantry, a meal swipe program, pocket pantry, and an in-person assistance fe with federal aid eligibility. This year's Rams Against Hunkers, Hunger and CSU's Parking Transportation Services have partnered together and are offering to lower parking citations by $20 if you contribute just $10 to Rams Against Hunger. This will last until May 14th and can only be done once per citation ticket. The two organizations have partnered up in the years past and will continue to support each other's causes. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sarah. Don't go anywhere, Rams, because Zaya Hiley is up after the break to give you a weekly weather report. Stay tuned. Welcome back from the break, Rams. I'm Zaya Hiley, and let's get right into our weather forecast for tonight. So you can see our current conditions in Fort Collins are at 36 degrees. And it's a very cloudy night and we actually can expect a few flurries or snow showers to be possible throughout the night but it should just be a little sprinkling of snow and the sunset is at 7:30, so perfect timing right after the show you could go check it out if you want to 
And now we can check out what our conditions look like on campus today. You can see this was before the rain hit, of course, but it was a beautiful day. The grass is starting to get greener, and we also had the flowers starting to bloom on the plaza. Spring seems to have sprung. It was very nice outside. We've got lots of students outside enjoying the weather as well. This guy was playing guitar. We had the commencement going on in the Oval, too, so there was lots of students walking around with their grad caps. It was a beautiful day to walk the Oval and for them to graduate, so that's pretty awesome. And now we have tonight's lows. You can see I've highlighted some of these areas in red because we do have a red flag warning issued by the National Weather Service because there is a chance of fire spread in these areas. This is caused by low relative humidity combined with very high temperatures and high wind gusts. So all of these areas highlighted in red um, do have a chance of very quick fire spread. But we're going to have the hottest temperatures down here tonight as well. We've got Lamar at 38, Pueblo at 36, Colorado Springs at 34. And then as we go over into the eastern side, we stay in the 30s as well. Moving into the mountains, it's a little bit colder. We've got Gunnison and Alamosa at 21, Telluride at 22, Grand Junction a little warmer at 34. And now we can look at tomorrow's highs. So tomorrow's looking warmer than it was today. We don't have any rain to worry about, but we stay uh, with a little bit of variation across the state. We've got really warm temperature down here at Pueblo at 71, but we also have some colder temperatures up in the higher elevation areas. We've got Vail at 48, Telluride at 45, and then throughout the rest of the state, we stay in the 50s and 60s. So we've got Grand Junction at 68, Craig in the 50s as well, as with, with, along with Lyman and Burlington in the 50s, and then Sterling and Lamar in the 60s. But of course, I know you're wondering about Fort Collins, so let's get into tomorrow's forecast. You can see we've got a high of 64 and a low of 37, and it's going to be a partly cloudy day tomorrow. But you can see here, we've got wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour. It's going to be windy tomorrow. Hold on to your papers. And we do have good air quality, though, so at least when the um, wind is hitting you in the face, at least it's good air quality. And lastly, we can look at our five-day forecast. So you can see on Thursday, we warm up a little bit with a high of 70. Friday, it cools down a little bit with a high of 61. And then we get a beautiful, nice day on Saturday. High of 72, low of 38, cools down a little bit on Sunday as we dip into the 50s. And that's all I have for you for the weather. And this is actually the last time that you'll be seeing me on weather for the semester. But it's been a pleasure telling you about it. We've got Robbie and Ren with more news after the break. But I kind of want to do like a mic drop. I don't have a mic, though, but you know what I'm going to do with this. Peace out, Rams. Welcome back from the break, Rams. The Fort Collins munis municipal election takes place today. One of the issues on the ballot is a zoning project to potentially turn the old land Hughes Stadium stood on into a housing project. The expected size of the zone would permit 550 new houses, but some residents in Fort Collins oppose the construction and believe the area should be preserved as an open space instead. In a previous city council vote to rezone the land for development, the project failed last June in a tie. This prompted the Colorado State University system to invoke a clause that would allow Leonard to build without needing permission from local offices. In response, those who opposed the development had placed an initiation on the ballot requiring Fort Collins to make an effort to purchase the property from CSU Systems and attempt to rezone the area fully as an open space. Now, there's no word whether Colorado State University would accept any offer made from the city or not. Speaking of elections, April 1st marked the end of the ASCSU Senate and presidential campaigns, and next year's executive team has been announced. The four-week-long 2021 ASCSU election cycle has come to an end. Almost 14% of the student body, which tallies up to a little over 4,000 students, voted in the election. Once voting concluded, the results came shortly after. Kyle Hill was voted the 51st Speaker of the Senate for ASCSU. It is an honor to serve as your next Speaker of the Senate. And I want to make sure that every student has an equal voice on this campus. We are going to make ASCSU more accessible. We are going to make it more inclusive. And we are going to treat everyone with diverse and dignity. After a competitive and engaging presidential race, Christian Dixon and Mary Gabristatic were voted the next president and vice president of ASCSU. This victory is not just for Mary and I, it is for everyone who believed in this vision. Right, who believed in this vision of love and respect and dignity for our campus, where every person and every story can be known. And I want you to know that you're a part of that vision. After the storm of this pandemic has passed, there's going to be some damage. Right? There's going to be an opportunity for us to rebuild what we know as the community of CSU, and our invitation is that you would join us. Dixon and Gabristatic promised to open the gates of student government and allow all students' voices to be heard through their values of radical inclusion, transparency, and stewardship. 
we're just so grateful. We're so thankful for everything. Um, we're ready to start the work, and we can't wait to have you in it. Every candidate put hard work and dedication into shaping what the CSU community is. Congratulations once again to all the winners of the 2021 ASCSU election cycle. COVID-19, the pandemic, and the quarantine have impacted everyone. But as it seems to wind down, we take a look at one group at Colorado State University who was present throughout the, the coronavirus. One group at Colorado State University has been working around the clock during a global pandemic in an effort to keep students motivated to practice healthy behaviors. Uh, yeah, the social learning campaign is really about correcting misperceptions about attitudes and values and behaviors around a particular issue. The Social Norming Task Force at CSU is taking a unique approach in their marketing in the hopes to correct the misperceptions students may have about COVID-19. One thing the task force was responsible for is putting signs just like this one all across Colorado State University's campus. But as the semester draws to a close, how will the task force continue its work or will it evolve into something entirely new? So we are now currently in conversations about what does it look like for us this upcoming summer, knowing that public health guidance may change, and what does it look like for us in the fall? All students at CSU need to do to see the work of the social norming task forces look, and all around is evidence of the hard work students and staff here at CSU did to keep Rams healthy and safe. Both Giles and Donovan are unsure of what the social norming task force will transform into once the fall semester rolls around, but they are both sure they still want to make an impact here at CSU. Spring break is only a couple days away, Rams. Sadly, students won't be returning to campus following the break, so it's time to move out of residence halls. CSU Housing has outlined some important procedure steps to be mindful of when moving out. Make sure to remove all non-university property from the room, return university property to its appropriate location, clean the room including all possible markings on the wall, report any damages found in the room to HDS facilities, and be sure to change mailing address once the move out process is complete. The bookstore is also allowing students to sell back their books. If students wish to do this, they can do so from till, till April 9th and again between May 10th throughout the 14th. Students at Colorado State University are banding together to build something bigger or maybe smaller than them. Spring 2020 looked different this year than usual and 24 students from eight different majors teamed up to design and construct a tiny house. The building of the house took place outside the Nancy Richardson Design Center. The project and those involved hope to raise awareness around alternative, affordable and sustainable housing to help those experiencing housing insecurity and homelessness. You know, I would really like to believe that I could live in a tiny house, but I really just don't think that the minimalistic style is for me. But I don't know about you, Robbie. I personally would agree. I would love to live in a tiny house secluded in the middle of the woods. However, I do not think I'd be able to last very long. Yeah, no, I'm a little too dependent on technology, honestly. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about it. Speaking of technology, you all know that, pl that uh, app TikTok? Well, Sophia Ridley is with us live in the studio to talk about how a TikTok influencer is using the platform for good. So. Social media app TikTok has exploded over the last couple of years. As it's grown, people have used their platforms for many different things. One creator, Aaron Murphy, has used his platform to raise money and start a nonprofit that helps provide food, shelter, and work to people from all over South America. Building a following on social media is extremely difficult, and it takes time to create a solid platform. Murphy explains how he started out on YouTube, but quickly learned that TikTok has a vast reach. Um, one thing I was doing was going through the, the throaches, like the, the trails that'll sneak you into another com a country. And I just kind of like documented it. And then the next day that one had 400,000 views. And so I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to kind of focus on this. And then the video after that was, um, I woke up the next day and it had a million views. So it was pretty quick. Murphy has over 1.2 million followers and regularly posts how their donations have changed people's lives. His most recent video shows how his followers provided supplies and other necessities to an indigenous tribe in Venezuela. Village. <laughs> Although Murphy has already changed thousands of people's lives, he isn't finished. Like, this is my main passion. I love doing it, you know. My, my goal is to do videos in every single Latin country and then expand from there. So I, I have a couple of years to go. He said, quote, 
My hope is that the people who've watched these videos would remember to feel gratitude for all that they have and learn how they can help literally change the lives of less fortunate human beings. End quote. If you are interested in donating or even checking out some of his stories, visit MurphsLifeFoundation.com. Well, Rams, that is all the news we have for you tonight. It has been a pleasure sharing the news with you this semester, but don't go anywhere because Ellison Hubbard is up next with his final show here at CTV. Meet again, don't know where, don't know when. But I know we'll meet again some sunny day.